Keep Home Show. Everybody almost tripped at the beginning of the show. That would have been great. We would have left it in, too. They're supposed to make me look good, but they're like, use the part where he looks like a fool. Uh, I'm, I'm in a pretty good mood, considering I saw someone eating alone today. I don't know. Can anyone, can anyone relate? I just get sad when I see somebody eating alone. So, like, I need this for fuel. It breaks my heart eating soup. They were eating soup. Blowing on it. It's too hot. Can't handle it, but I need to eat something before I hug Nana. She gives the firmest hugs. And the happier the food, I feel, it's sadder it is watching someone eat it alone. Like cake. You ever see someone eating cake <laughs> by themselves? <laughs> Museum food court. It's like you did something cultured, Bill. You earned a treat. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually love eating alone. I love eating alone, just not in public. Like, uh, I had dinner on my couch last night, like I do. You know why? The couch is the one place I'm free to eat how I like to eat, like a toddler. <laughs> Chinese takeout, dropping stuff, no pants in sight, <laughs> using my belly as a table. <laughs> and it's dangerous, too, because I have a white couch. Or I should say, I had a white couch. <laughs> I toddler eat on that thing so much, now it's more camouflage. <laughs> but I don't care. Toddler Pete doesn't care about stains. I'm proud of him. Each stain on my couch, it's like a memory. I show him off like a bad boy shows off his scars. <laughs> uh -huh. McDonald's ketchup, 08. <laughs> Pad Thai, summer of 13, still wet. The key to toddler eating, it's all about eating with your hands. I love eating with my hands. I love it. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I love it. But the man says you got to use a fork. Why? When I got God's forks. <laughs> and I'm not just, yeah, sure. <laughs> kind of a late bloom on that one. <laughs> Let's slap together our God forks and show support. And I'm not just God forking fruit or pizza or chicken wings, you know, socially approved hand foods. I'm forking hummus, <laughs> pasta, even your heartier soups if you let them cool down a bit. No, no. <laughs> it's like the arcade claw game, but the prize is always lukewarm minestrone. <laughs> Toddler style. <laughs> Got a couple methods for fried rice. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes I snow plow it right into my mouth from the carton, like I'm a cop on a stakeout. If the charge is being delicious, this rice is guilty. Or I'll let the fried rice harden in my fridge overnight, like into a solid landmass. It's like a new kind of food, hard rice. And I tear off chunks like a giant getting a handful of earth, bringing it up to my face, single grains falling off like erosion. Like, but if I'm out, in dignified society, and I gotta use silverware. Give me the spoon. Love the spoon. Fork, too aggressive. Four metallic spikes to jam into your food. Why? It's already dead, Kevin. <laughs> in that act out, I was having a meal with a man named Kevin. <laughs> There's some pressure with the fork, too. You gotta hold it right. Like on a date, you gotta hold it properly. Like a single chopstick, you know what I mean? You can't be on a date like this, holding it like that. That's a deal breaker. What, do you work on a chain gang? <laughs> Did someone announce the arrival of this meal with a whistle? It's like, good chow today. Rock's breaking real easy, too. <laughs> and if that's not enough with the fork, if you go to the fancy place, you gotta pick the right fork. Salad fork, dinner fork, shrimp fork, same fork. Who's the asshole making up new forks? <laughs> Sitting around his one bedroom apartment like, every food gets a fork. 
This'll improve fork sales. <laughs> Heir to the fork fortune. <laughs> I say, give me the spoon. Love the spoon. It's welcoming. You can put them on your nose, get a laugh. They're like the fun uncle of silverware. All cold and smooth. You know, like your fun uncle. <laughs> A spoon feels like when your dentist puts that uh, mirror in your mouth. I love that. He's been picking, he's been picking. Then he takes the break with that smooth mirror. That's what a spoon feels like to me. I love it. Ah, a break. I love it. In fact, before I die, I'd love to eat like ice cream with a dentist's mirror. You know? Wouldn't that be great? Those of you that are laughing are picturing it. You know what I mean? That's, that's a great moment. Then you go to the dentist. He's like, you've been eating a lot of sweets. You're like, yeah. In a way, I think you'd appreciate. <laughs> we got a great show tonight. I'm going to be talking with Lauren Cohan from Walking Dead and comedian Eliza Skinner will be here. We'll be right back. Spoon Sound. Spoon Sound. Welcome back, everybody. So The Walking Dead, as you know, is one of the most popular shows on television. So as you can imagine, it was a great thrill for me to sit down with one of the stars of that show. This is my conversation with Lauren Cohan, who plays Maggie. Let's take a look. I am so excited to be sitting here with the uh, electric and lovely Lauren Cohan. Thank you. From Walking Dead. You play Maggie or Margaret to the Die Hard fans. Oh, this is yeah. our first meeting. Yeah, this is how, great. How I'm going to authentically you? adjust my dress. It was authentic. Yeah, yeah. We prefer that you didn't, actually. Yeah. There could just be some, <laughs> something wrong in the whole interview, like if yeah. this could just be kind of leaning. Uh, ratings just went down. Yeah, Let shoot. Let see. You look a lovely. Bit, a little bit, a little bit. Now, I'm picking up a bit of an accent, and I'm mm. one of those hammy people that, it, you know, I'll oh. hear it, I'll want to do it, I want to know the story. So I'm sorry to be so typical, but what, you, what, what is the story? Where do you hail from? I hail from New Jersey. Now, I was you, born in New Jersey. I was going to say New Jersey. Yes, I thought. I'm hearing, <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, I do have this now. Yeah. Which is my Where do you get mixture. that? Where do you um, catch that? I moved to England. You want to catch it? I hear that you do a really good English accent. I, I like to try. Yeah. I'm one of those hams. I do like to say banana. Okay. No banana, yeah. Girlfriend. Banana. How about um, aluminium? Oh, clearly it's aluminium, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> See, it's fun, yeah, right? Well, That's you... what happens when you live there for 10 years. You suddenly start doing it full time. Well, I visited London, <laughs> and every once in a while I'll try to pass. I'll try to pass as a real Brit. Yeah, you they, look a little bit English. I got some of that. Yeah. I got like a, something wrong, wrong with Prince William. Like, some, <laughs> like I was attacked by bees or something. <laughs> oh, no. We need a new prince. But I love Cheers. Cheers really fills a, a blank yeah. in vocabulary. Yeah, a TV show? That's American. <laughs> okay, that is so up my alley. We're getting mugged. That is my kind of joke. Yay. That is fantastic. No, Cheers. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't see. I, was, no, okay. I closed my eyes to really inhale the euphoria of that. A friend of mine has a Boston accent sometimes. And when I fight with my mother, I'm always from Chicago. Really? Yeah, good no. choice. <laughs> you are a good actress. Thanks. Let's do a scene. Uh, I'm your best friend. Okay. From high school, though, and you've moved on. Mm. I sell Cutco knives. Okay, okay, so I'm staying in your place, and at first I was very polite, and now my knives are everywhere. The pennies that I cut with the shears are everywhere. And now you have to tell me that uh, you want me to clean up my knives. Okay. And... Uh, yeah. So, um... Wait, hold. Oh. Action. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Action. Um, Pete, there was some... We need to re-slate. Yeah. <laughs> That's so inside. Um, can I actually say something to you? That I, I don't mind us living together, and I know we were in oh, like high this. school. We were really good friends, but I moved away oh my to God. Russia because I had a sex change. You're now a woman. Yes, but I... I we're when you man. got in touch with me again, you said that you are dealing in knives. I think I want to see how the man cut pennies. And so I invite you back to live with me. If but nothing else yes. from this interview... Yes. Oh, a, a, cut, a cut? Okay. You're going to get cast as some sort of icy Russian woman that kills with fury. Yes, I hope so. Yep. I'm hope so. I'm hope so. Yes, yes, I like just... watching shows with very little conflict in the evening. Yeah. When I watch your show, I get real tense. 
Yeah, you have like, to watch it the next morning. Yeah, watch it in the morning. Yeah, what were you going to say? That something goes up inside, back no, no, inside you? Those, those are my butt, my butts. Your butt cheeks. My yeah. butt cheeks. Yeah. I okay. just call them my butt. And yeah. my butt will go, zombie. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, because like, you don't want to poop. Yeah. Do zombies poop? Yeah, they, they must because they eat. They eat humans. I will be honest with you. I've never thought of a zombie being like, yeah. one minute. Yeah. I haven't either until now. I'm super bad. You're you mildly religious, right? Scary. Uh, I am. I've actually tried a little bit of everything. Little dab. Little, little dab, little yeah. yeah. I was raised Christian and then... Regular? Regular. Just... Regular, I mean like Catholic or regular? Um, no, regular. My, well, a little bit. My, my grandmother was Catholic and then, Irregular. you know, so a little decaf, a little regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little decaf. A um, little unleaded, a little premium. Yeah, exactly. I'll let you choose exactly. which one's premium. 89, baby. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Was that an octane joke? I think that wasn't. Was. You just made an octane yeah, joke. Yeah. yeah. Looking at your headshot, I wouldn't be like, she's going to be making a lot of automobile <laughs> humor. Yeah. You look more like yeah. uh, pillows, milk baths. I feel yeah. like you could make your own butter. Yeah, my own butter. Yeah, like churning in. I, I, I'm not yeah. making a jerk joke. I just mean like you make like a delicious butter. I'm like, what is the deal with this butter? Like, I made it. Yeah, yeah. Not a big deal, really. Not a big deal, really. Yeah. Apparently, it's quite easy to make butter. Yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> very English. <laughs> oh, oh no. No, no, it was great, it was great. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm a single, one of those single men that you hear about. No, you're not. Yeah, I'm a single man. Oh, yeah. but you're so funny. Oh. <laughs> and that's our time. <laughs> I think we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish here. Thank you very kindly. That is like, that's like a rainy day. I'll just remember that you said that and be like, mm. yeah. We'll end with this. Mm. I understand you have a dog. I do have a dog. What's your dog's name? Well, I'll guess your dog's name. Okay. Scrappy. No. Samuel. No. James Brown. No, that's great. That's a good brown name. Yeah. If he's brown, this is James Brown. If he's a little rock and roll, the then. hardest working dog in show business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just tell me your dog's name and I'll feel Alvin. Stupid. Alvin. Yeah. Does he have um, a shirt with an A on in it? In hindsight, no, he doesn't. But he does. Uh, he hangs out at the office, the production office, when we're shooting. Yeah. And I came back one time, and he'd been dressed up like Tom Cruise from Risky Business uh. with Ray Bans. I don't agree with with, with dressing up dogs with people clothes do, on them, but, but it's it was the best. so cute. Yeah, yeah it was so cute. He's a big dog, though. He's like you know, forty pounds. It's such a terrible thing Probably. to do to a dog, but it's the best. But it's the best. Oh, what a horrible thing to impose upon it. I love it so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, in. of course. Thank you. Can I have a hug? I'm gonna. Okay. Uh, I would do better, but it's just such a little dress. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to check out The Walking Dead season finale, which airs Sunday, March 30th, my birthday, on AMC. We'll be right back with stand up comedian Eliza Skinner. <laughs> everybody. So as a stand-up comedian myself, it's always an honor for me to have stand-ups come and perform on this show. So I'm so excited to introduce you to tonight's comedian. She's a talented writer and performer, and she hosts the Big Money Comedy Show every Thursday here in Los Angeles. Please welcome Eliza Skinner, everyone. Eliza Skinner! Hey. So, uh, in LA, but I was just in New York for a few months for work. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun being in New York. Um, boy, do they hate LA. <laughs> and they will tell you about it. And it's weird because this is my home, but they will say things that people would never say about your home. <laughs> no one would ever walk in your house and be like, oh, I could never live here. <laughs> The people just seem fake. <laughs> but I love it here. It's where all my friends live. <laughs> my ex-boyfriends. Uh, I had lunch with my ex-boyfriend the other day. So. Oh, thank you for leaving me alone emotionally on that one. Thank you. Thanks. I'll take care of myself. Um, I, had, I had lunch with my ex-boyfriend. And I know that a lot of people, when you see your ex, you like to like dress up for it, right? <laughs> So you can be like, like, look what you're missing. <laughs> you made a mistake. <laughs> I like to go in the opposite direction, just look as shitty as possible. <laughs> so I can be like, yeah, you stuck it in this trash bag. You proud of yourself? <laughs> I win! I win the breakup! That's all 
all about winning and losing in the game of love. <laughs> my most recent ex is actually my ex-fiance, so. Oh, you came with me that time, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, no, he's fine, I'm fine, I just don't know how to stay in love with someone after watching them sleep on an airplane. <laughs> okay, if you're not laughing at that, that's because you sleep on airplanes. <laughs> The rest of us want to pour shit in your mouth and sew it shut. <laughs> you look like a big dead baby. <laughs> it's hard to feel sexual about you after seeing you that way. <laughs> it was actually hard for me to start dating again after that, because uh, I, mean, you know, I would go out on a couple of dates with a guy and be like, funny story, I used to be engaged, and then there would just be a man-shaped hole in the door. <laughs> I think they were making a lot of assumptions about me. A lot of unfair assumptions. I think they were assuming that I was like, oh, please, it almost happened. <laughs> I came so close to sweet wedding. <laughs> I still have the dress. <laughs> I keep it in my kitchen and sometimes I dance with it. Do you want to dance with my dress? <laughs> not true. I keep it under my bed so I can smell it to sleep. No, it's also not, I didn't do any of that stuff. Like, as soon, as soon as the ring went on, I was like, ah, it feels like fire. Ah. <laughs> not what I expected. No, I, I, I blame these guys, though. It, it, it's not them. It's me. I'm bad at dating. I don't like dating. Love is great. Dating is the worst. Like, you have to get to know people so fast. Some stranger, you have those getting to know you questions. That one question's just gonna unravel your whole personality. <laughs> one question. I had a guy in a date ask, okay, do you like cats or dogs? <laughs> and I was like, what, to draw? Are you serious? <laughs> Are we six? You're asking me my favorite animal and you're giving me two choices, like I can't like both. I can like both cats and dogs. <laughs> and clearly, by the way that I've answered, the answer is cats. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only reason to ask that question is to rule out all the people who are like, uh, cats or dogs? Oh, uh, neither. I like birds. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that they have knives for noses? <laughs> and their eyes look like marbles pushed into tiny buttholes. <laughs> I said that to a friend of mine and he was like, oh yeah, bird people are so weird. I knew this girl, she had like a buttload of birds. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't sound like that many birds. <laughs> It depends a lot on the person <laughs> and the birds and like what they're willing to put up with. <laughs> I feel like for me it's maybe one bird, but honestly, I, don't, I haven't checked. I don't know. I'm Eliza Skinner. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Thank you. Eliza Skinner, everybody. I'll be right back with more. Time for Eliza Skinner, everybody. Eliza, fantastic. Thank you. I, I love the line about uh, uh, bird eyes, mm -hmm. marble into a butthole. Oh, yeah. Do you remember, sometimes I remember where I was when a line like that hits me. Like, I've been working the bird chunk, and then you're like driving, and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> well, I was trying to explain why I don't like birds. Yeah. And it is the eye. It's like, it's like that weird fleshy circle around the eye. Yeah. Like, ugh, it looks like a oh. It's gross. Yeah. And uh, I said that conversationally, and the people around me thought I was a horrible monster, but I was like, good for stage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to just quote your act, but knife for a nose yep. is very, very That's, funny. And people invite that into their homes. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Can I do that? In that bit? No. <laughs> No. I don't, we do a show every day. I, I'd love to do the bird monologue, and that uh, seems proven. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. No. <laughs> uh, well, I don't like to ask uh, normal questions. Let's do some weird questions. Cool. Uh, we both used to live in New York. What's the grossest thing you ever saw? Uh, stranger street sex. 
Strangers, <laughs> stranger, you knew they didn't know each other? They did not seem to know, have the respect that people, <laughs> acquaintances have. <laughs> No chemistry. No. He's kissing her ear. Nope, none of that. There was a laugh from behind me that was like, Knowing? Is he here? Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. And then it rained and washed us off. Yep. Uh, what's your favorite X-Men? Uh, I mean, Kitty Pride probably. Okay. I, I've done I've done Kitty Pride's voice for cartoons before. You have? Um, yeah. Can you do it? Uh, well, it's this. <laughs> this is it. I'm kind of losing my voice. Mm -hmm. So at this point in the day, I, I always get back to the office and do Krusty. I just go, ugh, <laughs> hey, Bart. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah, when I yawn, I think I sound like Snoopy. Or, um, yeah, like Snoopy. Snoopy has a sound? Yeah, like, <laughs> That's the most rewarding type of impression where you're like, Snoopy doesn't make, there it is. <laughs> Eliza Skinner, everybody! That is our show! Thanks to The Walking Dead's Lauren Cohan. Good night, everyone!